Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. We are so grateful to our Father for this opportunity, for this wonderful moment, day, whereby we share together the bread of life that is made to satisfy humanity. And there's no part of you that will remain unsatisfied will be fulfilled because the fullness of man is found in Christ Jesus himself. There's nowhere else we will find our fullness, our satisfaction, our joy, our happiness, except in him. And through him, we can grow in our, in our, in our true identity, in the fullness of who we really are without Christ there's no true image of humanity the rest will be an imposter lies deception but once we have this knowledge of our Jesus of our Lord Jesus Christ then it is a guarantee that you'll be fulfilled and you'll be full full of what you are supposed to be full of. Thank God for this opportunity. So I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that as even as the gospel comes to you, may your eyes open up and your heart, may you receive the ability to see, the ability to, to understand, and the ability to acknowledge, to acknowledge where you are, to acknowledge what you have, to acknowledge what Jesus did on your behalf. And he did it as you, which means whatever he did is yours. It is yours. It is as if you were the one doing it in him. Thank God, thank God, in Jesus' mighty name. We've been reading and finding out uh, what some few verses uh, that reveals the power of the cross uh, mean most important things there are most there are some important things we should focus on um the bible might be saying something but the most important thing is what does it mean the meaning is more important than what it says you see you can quote what the bible says and yet you you miss what it means and once the meaning of what it says has been misunderstood then the purpose of what it says has not been reached. You can quote any scripture, but the Bible, but in the Bible, but does it mean what you think? Or it has another meaning which you should find out, or you should get to know. And that is why we have scriptures that reminds us that those who have ears may hear what the Spirit of God tells the churches. Why that? Because you see, you have to have the ear to hear what the Spirit says. He's talking about the understanding of what is communicating to us. So the understanding of the meaning of the, the gospel, the message of the scripture is very, very crucial. That's what you need and that's why we explain to help you have the real meaning. The meaning is important than what it says because you might be tempted to interpret it literally and miss out the whole idea that is trying to portray to us it says in first second corinthians 15 15 55 15 rather and we've been studying and discovered that we are so one with him and that that idea we got it from this verse it says his purpose in dying for all was that men while still in life should cease to live for themselves and should live for him who for their sake died and was raised to life so we talked about living for for him living for him versus uh, living for for yourself so living for him was 
and is still what we wanted to emphasize on that it means not living your old life rather live the new life which is found in him and we live that life through the participation and we brought forth the idea and the example of uh, a tree at the branch like jesus used uh, that example in the book of uh, john and he talked about i am the vine ye the branches you're the branches and so he explained and I wanted to use that as well to explain to you what it means to live for him and you being the branch and jesus christ being the the, the vine you understand that the branch cannot live for itself it is even uh, crazy to think of having your own life if you're a branch you cannot have your own life in fact you don't have your own life the tree in which you are connected is your life so your true life comes from the tree so we can say that our true life is christ you see acknowledging this is the idea is the whole idea here remember we're talking about the results of the cross after the cross we can no longer live as we used to live as if nothing happened and this is to magnify the work of jesus christ and the impact it had over humanity so i'm bringing this to you so that you may realize it's not about the text the, the paper the the pieces we're trying to read here we are revealing you what happened to you you are actually the focus here we're talking about you getting to understand that indeed you cease to be an ordinary man you cease to be what you used to be you ceased from the day you were crucified with him you cannot claim to have been crucified on the cross and remain the same it is impossible that's what i'm presenting to you it's impossible for you to actually live for uh, to live the life you used to live you know what is only possible is to live in deception with the idea of the old man who was crucified on the cross yet the truth will be you are not there you died you are alive in uh, in christ you are in christ right now but you can live with the wrong idea wrong mentality while the truth of your your position today is something else so the message comes to you so that it may help you to align your thoughts with where you are now or your true identity or truth about you you see and that's why we are presenting to you so he says to live for yourself ceased when you died with christ and what he's calling us to do today is to acknowledge to acknowledge that he is no longer we are no longer living in the first man he's dead he's gone the first man is gone the first man is dead he's no longer there the old man is gone see it is like we use think about this imagine two houses the former house you used to live in and the new house where you're living now this this example actually is found in romans chapter 6 you study the message the version called message you realize it talks about the former house and the new house he says you cannot live in the old life in in the old house when you have shifted so he considers adam as the first house and considers christ as the second house the new house where you were today you can have thoughts and ideas about the old or former house you used to live in but the truth is that you're no longer living there you see now what i'm trying to present to you is he says to live after him we should live after him we should live for him living for him is now acknowledge that you are no longer in the former house in the old house the old house is no longer there you shifted in fact let's call it a country a city imagine you lived in the city you imagine if you have once lived in a city and you shifted you went to another city now if you shift you have shifted but your mind remains in the old city where you used to live this is the only game the, the mind game that uh, we find hard to discover 
and we fail to live and walk according to our weird now, instead we continue to entertain the ideas and the thoughts of the former uh, cities and old cities or houses where we used, we used to live. It's what I'm talking about. So it is important for us to discover it is now possible to live after for Christ. I wanted to bring that to make it even simple and easier for you. Get to understand you are already in Christ. All you need is to acknowledge that that's where you are. Let that be your idea, your mindset, your mentality. Let it be your, your life. Acknowledge it. Once you acknowledge it, it will be easier for you to walk and live accordingly. You see, the I, the first, and the first, uh, the most important point or ideal, the most important thing here for you to live after Christ is to acknowledge. Just acknowledge. Just acknowledge it. That that's it. That's it. Because you're no longer where you want to put yourself. You have shifted, but do you acknowledge? That you are no longer in that very house where you used to live. That today you are living in a new house. That's it. That's it. And you know, you and I can agree on this point. That when you shift uh, into a new city, a new house, a new place. At times, you, you're not used to that place. You're not used to that uh, area. There are times you are... Uh, not comfortable like you used to be because the former house if you didn't leave it for any reason maybe running away from that former house if you just shift you know you you, you continue to have those thoughts and ideas of where you used to live it's normal right but with with time you get used to where you are now and and acknowledge that this is where I am and, and you begin to enjoy and love the place where you are you see so I'm saying you have already shifted you have already shifted probably you were not acknowledging that that's where you are now and you don't need to mix it because if you mix it it will be in the head but the truth is you already into another place he says that and should live for him who for their sake died and was raised to life so we should live for the one who for our sake died so he didn't even die for 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 anyone else but you he didn't die for angels he died for you we are so grateful that he died for you and I and so he says we should acknowledge that the rest is to live or acknowledge that he's the only life we have. Christ is the only life you have. Christ is the only place that exists now because the former place is no longer there.